Well, there seems to be consensus on George Floyd's death. It was wrong. But where conversations start to split, at least in the Hmong community, is involvement in the protests to demand justice and change in the system. And that was apparent when a Hmong family, along with others in the community, decided to go protest. We love each other in the Hmong community, but there are some who haven't thought about how black people's civil rights movement carved a path for us to live our lives freely when we arrived. And I know some Hmong are hurt because they've had bad experiences as kids at the hands of black people, but good and bad people come in all colors. That's Yuo Vang, the mother of Fong Li. The 19-year-old was shot and killed by a Minneapolis police officer in 2006. The officer said Lee had a gun on him and feared for his life before shooting Lee multiple times. Lee's family didn't buy it, taking it to court, citing a questionable investigation and evidence planting. But the court didn't agree, leaving the family in what they consider a purgatory of injustice. We feel like if there's justice for George, there will be justice for us for everyone else, for our, for the future, for our kids. So Lee's family's presence along with other Hmong at the protest sparked a conversation that is taking a closer look at the Hmong community's history with black Americans. It's complicated by the fact one of the officers involved in Floyd's death, Tu Tao, is Hmong. And I want to be clear here, the issue of anti-blackness are complex and not just unique to this community. There are even nuances between the Hmong ethnic group and the larger Asian community that we don't have time to get into. This is not an exhaustive list, but it addresses some common themes heard to see if we can get to a better understanding. So Bo Tao Urabe and Chris Hur are advocates in the community responding to some of what is being said. Black lives, they matter here. Someone says it's the black community's fight, not ours. The reason why Hmong people, you know, a Hmong uh, person could be killed every few years by the police uh, stems from the same system that kills black people every day, just about, right? That's why it's our fight. Someone says we grew up poor as refugees or children of refugees and we quote, made it. I don't think people should be comparing our, our own sufferings at all. I think that when it comes to suffering, we all experience it differently. Um, and to say that, you know, my family and I have made it per se doesn't mean that oh they should be able to make it because there are different circumstances when you when you really look at the bigger picture of things. And unfortunately throughout American history there have been so many attempts to pit you know Asian Americans against black Americans and so that tactic is meant to distract us from being able to work together to really root out racism. Some BLM protests are connected to violence, looting and destruction of property. When people are trying to um, kill us or take away our freedom and liberties, uh, we have fought back, right? So I think it's important for us to not uh, take away, take us out of the uh, picture of understanding what uprisings are about uh, and what it means to really be fighting for your life. Someone says it's not just black people who are killed by police, all lives should matter. I think that's what everyone is saying, right? All lives should matter. But right now, when we look at what is happening, black lives don't matter. If we look at systematically who dies at the hands of police, and especially um, those who are killed when they are unarmed, and things like that is disproportionately black people. You have to be able to take a step back and realize what kind of space am I taking up when I make that statement? And, and you know what kind of attention am I taking away from the, the real matter here? And where we fall as among people is going to matter. And so do, do we want to uh, look back and say we were part of uh, causing that change? Or do we sit silently sit by? And where I'm hopeful is that there are many more people who are not just silently sitting by. I felt like it was my social responsibility to really step in and put a voice in the community and say it is not OK. There's a more in-depth look at this. Just look for the story on care11.com. And Alicia, you know, um, I know that this is a story that is very much happening every single day in our community right now um, online, and things are getting very combative. And so this is why I wanted to address it. No, Gia, thank you so much for sharing your perspective. I, I feel you and I hear you and I feel like myself growing up in the Midwest, a white woman, I feel like so many of us have had blinders on and kind of just been focusing on our own, you know, personal perspective and own life. But it's so nice to take those blinders off and hear these stories from so many different walks of life. So 
thank you for sharing that. Yeah, for sure. If you want more information, just head on over to care11.com. Felicia,